Hello, um, as uh, he had said, my name is Anna and I am a designer with Michaels. And um, I uh, created this project for you guys and I'm excited to share it. So um, I'm gonna walk through the materials that we'll use first and I will kind of backtrack a little bit as we go through. So it's not gonna be a you step one all the way through. I'll, I'll, you know, I like to go back and forth and show things a couple of times. So um, just bear with me. So um, first thing that we're gonna use is Model Magic. This is an air dry clay. There are several different things, you know, it's kinds out there on the market. If you have a different brand, that is fine. Um, it's just, it's just an air dry clay. And this one just happens to work really well. And I had it on hand. So that's how, that's why we're using this one. Um, and then you will need um, paintbrushes. Uh, you don't need this many. This is just the, this is the packet came that I cited on the instructions. This is just the one that I have. Um, and, but any paintbrush will do, any paintbrush will work. And actually, if you don't have a paintbrush, you can use, uh, you know, you can use a paper towel, you can use a cotton ball, um, anything that transfers the paint to the clay, um, mainly because it's kind of a watercolor effect. So it doesn't have to be super, you know, specific with any kind of like a, the smaller um, detail brushes or any of that kind of stuff. So we need paintbrushes. You will need um, some paints. These are the Creatology, um, Acrylic paints, the these are the washable paints. So they're great to have, especially with little ones. Um, I personally get stuff all over myself. My 18 year old gets stuff all over himself and he is an artist. So <laughs> usually artists get stuff everywhere. Um, so anyways, uh, washable paints. Um, these are again, our Creatology, not imperative, this brand, any, any paints will work. Uh, you'll also need a little um, cup of water and that's mainly to dilute the paint a little bit, make it spread those kinds of things. It's not um, nothing fancy there. Uh, and then once we're done with it, when we want to create a necklace or a bracelet or something like that, you will need uh, some cording of some kind. This guy here is the cotton braiding cord from the Creatology from the kids line. And um, the, it, it's a great product. There's also, I mean, there's a, well, I have it in the baggie. Sorry, I'll, let me take it out of there. And there's a black, for this particular type of cording, this is just, like I said, it's a cotton braiding cord braiding cording is what it says on the packaging. There's a black color that we carry. There's the natural color. And then um, this right here is just a Creatology, like a twine option. You can use yarn, you can use string, you can use um, Rex lacing if you have the, uh, sorry, plastic lacing. Um, if you have, if you have that on hand. So just whatever you wanna use to make a necklace or bracelet will work. Um, and then, Let's see what else is next. Um, I have these wood beads here. I have them in a little container, a little slime jar, actually. These are great for not only slime, but holding, holding beads. Um, so I have the natural set here, but you can use any kind of bead that you have. You want a hole that's a little bit bigger to string the um, your cording through because the cording's not super thin like a... Um, um, like a train, like a fishing line, a real thin, this it's not super thin. So, um, but you can use like regular pony beads. This one's got a kind of a pearlized or the matte ones. You can use alpha alphabet beads. I have some of those here. They're in a big container, so it's going to be kind of loud, but I have them all in here. You can use alphabet beads, just any kind of bead that you want or no beads. It's up to you. And then um, you'll need some scissors to cut your uh, stringing material, whatever your cording is. And again, you can use floss, uh, like the um, embroidery floss, any of that stuff. Then I have a handy dandy little, just a everyday home paper towel. I have a couple of them. That's just because we're dealing with water and paint. It's just good to have on hand next to you. Um, if you have wet wipes, they're not on the list, but they are also a nice little tip to have around. Um, we'll need just little toothpicks or any kind of, I mean, like a pencil, like if you have a pencil, uh, I wouldn't do a pen just because um, it could, you know, transfer over onto your clay, but if you don't really, if that doesn't bother you, pin will work. Um, push pin, to, uh, paper clip, but toothpicks are the best, in my opinion. They work for all kinds of fun things. And then finally, of course, we will need some leaves to make impressions. And I just went on a nature walk today, so these are fresh leaves. 
um, freshly on the ground. I like to get them off the ground, not necessarily off the branch, but if you want the branch, I think that's fine too. So I have all kinds of styles and shapes and the best are the ones that have kind of the little bit of vein. And I'll show, I'll go through this again as I'm, as we're walking through the project. Uh, and when we're on the spotlight, you can probably see them a little bit better, but um, these are like, they have good veins. Uh, if you have one that doesn't have great veins, you'll be surprised. Your impression will work great. So do not worry. I have all kinds of different shapes. I went into my neighbor's yard. I went into my yard. But my neighbors were outside, so they said I could take some leaves. So, um, all right. So, if you want to switch me over to Spotlight, we will get started. And I am going to let me move this guy down a little. Or let's see. I'm sorry. Bear with me a minute. This this camera is a little backwards of what I'm used to seeing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to stay in the middle. If I go off stray, somebody raise their hand and let me know. Um, I will definitely come. Oh, let me. Yeah, and while we're Hi. getting set up for that, actually, somebody <laughs> actually did have a question already as, as awesome. we're getting started. Uh, the, uh, Natural Learning asked, can I need my model magic, uh, K-N-E-A-D? Yes, we will need it. Um, mm -hmm. you, you don't need to need it a lot, but we will need it um, here shortly just for a few minutes. So um, great question. Um, you're a little ahead of me, but that's awesome. That will work just fine. Um, so yes, we will need our clay. So if you want to go ahead and pinch off a small... Uh, like a small portion of your clay and then start kneading it. Um, and that's basically just kind of squeezing it and playing with it and, and moving it from, from hand here. I, I'm doing my hands up here. Just kind of put it in your hands. I don't have any yet, but you'll just put it in your hands and kind of, you know, play with it and move it around. What you're doing is you're just kind of loosening it up. And I will get to that in just a minute myself. Um, I just wanted to show, these are some of the final projects that I did and that were probably on the um, front of the class when you signed up. So there's a bracelet here, there is a necklace here, and then I will show you how to do this fun sliding knot towards the end. And then um, these guys here, we're going to come back and use these because as I am working through these, I won't obviously have time to let everything that I do on camera dry. So um, because I'm going to be doing multiple things, you guys may do a couple of them and they may dry when I'm backtracking. So just bear with me here, we will see these, these guys will appear again in a little while. They may not be the exact leaves that I use, but they will be close. Okay, so I'm gonna move all of these out of the way. So, and I took my rings off. If you have any rings on and you don't want clay stuck in anything, I would suggest to go ahead and remove your rings, put them in a safe place. But if they don't bother you getting stuff in them, go for it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of clay. Sorry, it's a little loud. And there's probably more than I need. And as the question uh, brought up a few minutes ago, they want you to knead. So we're just kneading it. And I'm just stretching it and pulling it and playing with it. So basically kneading your clay is just playing with it. Whew, I'm gonna pull my hair back real quick. And okay, so our first step is to you know pinch off a little bit of clay and roll it into a ball, but we're kneading it for a few minutes before or a few seconds, however you wanna do it. And then I'm just gonna roll it into a ball. Sorry, it's kind of fast on the camera. I'm trying to go slow. I kind of have a warp speed sometimes here. So, and it does not have to be a perfect ball. As you see, mine's kind of cattywamp a little bit. And um, it's just an imperfect circle basically is what you're wanting to do. So you're wanting to push it down into a circle. Now this is gonna be a little bit bigger than what I normally would do. So, which is okay. Um, as you push it down onto your working surface, um, kind of peel it back up and then flip it over, do the same thing. I just got fingernail marks all in mine. But if you want a little bit smoother, here's a little, here's a pro tip. You can use, if you have a glue stick or glue stick like this or marker, anything like that, just, you can use it as a rolling pin to smooth your surface out a little bit. It does not have to be perfect. I just want to get those little nail things off of mine that I that I happened to do when I was flipping mine over. But you, you just use this, or if you have a slime jar, it's another good one. Just be careful because this guy's rigid here, so you don't want to get you don't want to get ribs unless you want the rib look. That's up to you. You can do it any way you want. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a little little tips there if you have those handy, or you can use you know any kind of smooth something. I got something in mind, but that's okay. Okay, so we have our little imperfect circle. You see, it's not, you know, it's not shaped. And again, this is bigger than what I normally would do, but 
I think that's fine for today. We'll just keep on going. If you want something, if you do want a more perfect circle, but you don't have, um, you know, you can use a plastic cookie cutter to make a circle. You can use the top of a paint bottle to, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can use. I have this um, glue stick top, you know, I can make a circle, you know, if I, if I want to do that. So that's just a, another little pro tip there. So I'm going to make mine. I'm gonna actually make it a little bit smaller. Well, yeah, while you're uh, while you're doing that, Anna, we did have a couple questions come in. Awesome. If that's all right. Yes. Um, Alicia asked, "Can I use air dry clay?" Yeah, that's what this is. Air dry okay. clay. That's perfect. awesome. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Then and then uh, from an anonymous, should it be thick or thin? Um, you know that is personal preference. You can do it. Did you guys freeze or is it just me? Uh, looks like it's frozen for a second okay. here. Let's, no, oh, there, there we go. go. Perfect. Yeah. Um, you can do it and I will show you here actually with these two that I did this guy here if you can see is pretty thin but this one's a little thicker so it's really it's just and these were just two I did the same day I did them back to back so it is preference if you like it thicker if you like it thinner I will say that if it's a little bit thicker it does give you a little bit more room to push the leaves down into your um, clay so um, you know just play with it I know the you know, if you have just a little bit of clay left, I mean, you can always, once you do your impression and if you don't like it, knead it again and, and start over. And we, and we will do that probably a couple of times in this class, just because some people aren't able to start the same time we are. Um, so I like to backtrack just to get everybody caught up. So, so far we have um, kneaded our clay. We've rolled it into an imperfect little circle ball and then flattened it into a imperfect circle. And it looks like I'm down a little bit. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shift. Hang on, let me, let me just move him up a little bit and see if I can get a better placement on the camera. There we go, we like that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna roll this guy out a little bit more. And so it's not super thick. I'm terrible with measurements, but I would say it's probably about, maybe a little bit thicker than a quarter minus. Um, but again, I'll show this another time. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. If you can see here, this one's pretty thin. This guy, it's pretty thick around, but it does have some thinner spots. So it's not definitely not perfect. So, and again, we're not striving for perfection. This is just a, this is a fun impression project. So just do what, how you like it, how thick or thin you like it, how big or small you like it, a shape. If you want to shape it, like I said, go for it. You can use paper cutter, um, you can use um, cookie cutters. You can use um, craft sticks, use your toothpick. Um, those are great tools uh, to use or anything. I mean, like I said, you can use the top of a paint bottle. That's a great way to make a circle. So there you go. Um, and then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to make our leaf impression. So I have all kinds of leaves. As I promised earlier, I would show you guys this a little bit closer to the camera. This one has some really good deep veins, which does tend to make a pretty good impression. But this one doesn't have very deep ones. And you'll find that these right here make will make a really great impression as well. Um, I have this Japanese maple leaf. I only know that because my neighbor, as I mentioned, was outside and she helped show me and tell me what this guy was. And we're in Texas. So to find some green leaves right now is pretty, pretty um, sparse. So I did pretty good this morning. This guy. So I have all kinds of different leaves here. A big, small. I have some with you know normal leaf shapes, some that are maple leaf shapes, some that are smooth, some are spiky. All of these are great, great options. Some of them look like this one had a heart shape. So that's how I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. So, you know, any of these work. Now you can use multiple leaves. If you see on this guy here, I used multiple leaves. This is actually a different leaf than this one. And this one, although this one looks similar to this one, it is a little bit different. Or you can use one big one or, you know, however, this one, I'd even like, like it's coming off of the of the impression because it was a bigger leaf. Let's see what this one is. This one has this one's a little bit harder to see because the color I, I chose turned out to be a little bit brighter than I had anticipated. But there's a leaf here and here and here and here and here, and they're all different. So I think it all looks great any way you do it. So for this first one, I'm going to do multiples. So I'm just going to set my leaves, and you can do it. I you know choose the side of the leaf that has the best vein so if, if the front has more veins or more or more texture then you can turn it upside down like this one i'm going to try upside down um and then this one has some great texture on the back 
and, and, and have fun with them. You can, you know, make them different shapes and, and pointing different directions. This one, I'm not sure if it really has many veins. So this one might just be the shape of a leaf. So once I get my leaves on how I want it, I'm gonna push them down into the clay. And um, for the sake of just showing how to, um, you don't have to use anything to roll it, but just for, you know, you can, just for a little bit additional security that you're gonna get some of those good impressions on there. Just gonna use my little glue stick to roll those. And then you just lift them up. Oh, that one did have some good ones. And this, I'm gonna use my toothpick here. There we go. It's got a little bit of some of the backyard on there, but that's okay. We can, you can use a, use a brush and get some of that off. Might wanna put a little bit of water on there. Uh, but not too much because you don't want it to mess up your um, your impression. But remember, we are going to paint these. So a lot of that stuff, that stuff will not be, you won't see that once we're painting them. The paint really helps bring out the impression. If you see here, the darker paint, like it gravitates and goes, goes inside the little grooves of the impressions. So it kind of highlights our, our impression. So it's going to be, although on here, you may not be able to see it super well. I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer. Um, it will get much better. Sorry, I'm I'm going off the off the screen. It's like opposite of what I wanted to do. <laughs> so, there we go. That's pretty good. Yeah, there we go. So um, I'm going to move this one, and I'm going to do another one. While we're uh, getting set up for that other one, we did have a few questions come Great. through here. A okay. um, few more questions about the kinds of clays that we could use. Moni asked if we could use polymer clay. Is that something that we could use? I think we might have lost you on the computer screen because I can't hear you. So hello. I'm oh there you go. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I lost you. I heard Moni had a question um about some different clays. Yes. Uh Moni would uh wanted to know if we could use polymer clay for this. Uh, well, um for I will say yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, there is because I work for Michaels and we do have, um, you know, requirements on age, ages appropriate, age appropriate for kids. I have to go with the items that actually tell me an age, uh, you know, age appropriate. But, um, you know, a lot of polymer clays are safe for kids to use. And some of them have like an age eight and up on, uh, on the packaging. And those are things that we, we, know, we know have been tested and are safe for kids. Yes, you can use polymer. Um, that's the... That's the, the short answer, but the, but the, you know, the long answer is just, you know, what is, uh, a, you know, age appropriate for what, uh, for the participant and, uh, and you are, and, and in your, you know, you guys can make those decisions. I'm not here to make that decision for you. So it does work just as well as air dry. You just, you just will have that uh, baking element that we will not have with the air dry. Awesome. And, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, uh, age appropriate uses here. Uh, Shante asked, could we use Play-Doh as an option as well? You can, you can use Play-Doh. Play-Doh tends to, it, it hardens more um, and it might flake once it's dry uh, when, you, you, when you're wearing it out. I'll be honest with you. I have not used Play-Doh in so long that the formula may be slightly different and as technology gets better, it may be better than it is now, but it will work just as, just as well as the air dry clay. It just may, um, afterwards, it may have a little bit different um, longevity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for so, sure. That's a great question. I actually would be curious to know that myself as far as how well it, because like I said, I haven't, you know, my kids are 15 and 18. Play-Doh's been out of the house for quite a while. Um, <laughs> however, I, um, technology has changed and it would, I would be interested. I, I may try that myself actually. Yeah. Yeah. A little science experiment there. Yeah. And then anonymous asks, can we make more than one, which we're getting ready to work on our second one right now. So uh, keep watching. Make it, yeah. Make as many as you want. Um, I, I like to do a couple of them on camera. So, um, cause people kind of work at different paces and that way I try to make sure I capture everybody and um, everyone gets to see how to do it, um, with along with me. So, uh, and like I said, I backtrack a little bit, so, um, make as many as you want. Um, that's awesome. I think it's great. And, you get a fair amount if you get if you did end up with this you know this packaging here you get a lot of you get a lot of the air dry clay in the package so you know you can make a lot of them 
Make some with your friends, for your friends, for yourself, for your family. All of it is, is great. So I'm going to now on this one, I didn't really get any large leaves outside. So I'm just gonna do one in the middle here. And um, so I've balled my, I've balled and I've kneaded and then balled my clay, flattened it out into an imperfect shape, imperfect circle. Um, and then I've smoothed the surface by rolling it and kind of kneading it. And if you, and if you don't have anything to smooth it out, like I'm using this little jar here or the glue stick, um, you know, you can use your hands. If you have a piece of paper, sometimes you can put a paper over it and, and do go like this, it's back and forth over it, smooths it out a little bit. Um, but you know, any of this worked, a smooth side of a cup, all those kinds of things are great. So I'm just gonna use this guy and I'm just lightly going over it because I don't wanna flatten my clay much more than what I already have. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. It's getting a little bit of frog in my throat there. And then I'm gonna pull this guy and I'm just using a toothpick just to get the corners. And actually this is just convenient because the toothpick actually I cite for another purpose later in the project. Ooh, this one's got good, this one's got a really, really good impression. So I'm lifting it up a little bit so you can see it better. That's a great one. So what I, um, the toothpick is originally intended for is simply to make your hole. So when you are adding your cord later. Now I'm, my hole is pretty big. And I do that because as I mentioned earlier, for those of you um, who were on there and if anyone missed it, um, the cording that I um, have chosen to string this is not super thin. It's not thick either, but it's not super thin. And to be honest, I'm actually going to do what's called a lark head knot. And I will show you guys that after a while. So you need it to, you know, two pieces to be able to go through the hole or two sides, two ends. So, so I wanna make sure my hole is kind of big. This one right here, I just did a hole at the top for a necklace. Um, this will not be dry and ready to string. I will be using another, you know, one I did earlier, but you can see that this hole is fairly large as well. If you forget to do the hole now and you have your project already dry and you're like, oh no, I forgot my hole. Don't worry. Um, you can use, I have an adult get a, like a push pin or a tooth or not toothpick, I'm sorry, a push pin or, um, you know, like a more of a metal or even a needle, like a, a short, a sharp uh, product that is metal. Metal tends to go through it easier and you can still poke through and, and make your hole. So don't fret, it will be okay. But I try to do it when it's soft, just makes it a little bit easier on me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have a couple of questions related to this this hole and the line used. Um, so uh, Kim asked, because I don't have a string, could I use something like a fishing line? I would imagine yes. it's, it's personal preference, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You can use um, you can use yarn, embroidery floss, you know, uh, twine, ribbon. If you have ribbon, if you have a if you have an old T-shirt you don't want, cut a sleeve, cut a sliver out of it, make a cool recycled. You know, continue with the recycled trend. Now that hole will have to be kind of large for that, but you can do it. Um, and you can stretch it, make it even thinner. So great, that's a little pro tip there. Um, you can use cording like I have here. This is just cotton braided. It's called cotton braiding cording. A mouthful with all the ings um but uh, you can use that you can use um, fish line or what's called transite actually in the jewelry world it's called transite but it is the exact same thing as fish line so you can use that um you can i'm trying to think what else um, plastic lacing there's all kinds of I'm, I'm like visually going down the aisle in my in my head um you know string some rainbow loom rubber bands together and you can pop it through there i mean there's so many so many um ideas so you can do you know all kinds of things if you don't have uh, the this cording that I'm using on hand it is not the only cording that is uh, that will work in this. And you can use uh, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit on some alternatives. Um, I had mentioned earlier we were going to use you know we're going to string some wood beads on here. But if you don't have wood beads, you can use pony beads, regular any kind of beads. The beads can be bright colors. They can be you know neutrals. I even grabbed some of these guys here, which are a lot of fun. Um, which have words on them and you can like have fun like shineful that's kind of not the best example but it still works right you can do you know we can do you know love will and if you come up, i mean just it's just fun stuff these these little words these things are so much fun i mean you can you can do all kinds of things you can even use just alphabet beads and, and create a word um you can push those things in your clay if you want to um actually we will so if you have one that just says let's say We'll use 
the word piece just because that's the one that was right there. And you can just push it into your clay. You wanna push it in pretty far. So this one you may want a little bit thicker clay piece, but you can push it in there and let it dry. Now I will be honest, it might pop out, but if it does, put some glue behind it and then uh, put your bead back in there, let it dry. And then the good thing about that is your impression is already in there. It has the little groove for your for your um, piece that you want to um, gl uh, glue to your glue to your guy. Oh, look at impress the word on because the, there's a word on the back. Um, put glue in there, stick them back in there. That actually might be a better idea because when we paint it, you don't want to paint your this and you want to go around it. So and then you can put glue in there, let it dry. And there's some. Um, and I don't, let me see if I have some. Yeah, I do. This glue right here is a, it's called Glitter and Sequin Glue by Creatology. It's a really, really good, uh, a really good glue. And this is a larger bottle, but there is a smaller one. And it's it's a great glue. It's good for four, uh, ages four and up. It has a, it has a, um, a tip on it so you can be specific. It looks like we might have lost you audio wise here for a second. It looks like we got a little freezing action. So I, need, I can see you. I can see you moving. So I know that I'm not frozen. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're back. back. Your uh, phone camera is still frozen, but at least you're back here with us. Yes. There we go. There we go. Yeah. It's all caught up now. Perfect. Right. So um, just to you know, show for those of you who may not have gotten to see it in the beginning or missed it. Um, this you have beads here. We can put alphabet beads on here. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. So this is your project. I'm just guiding you through helping with tips and questions. So you guys, anything that you want to do with your project, it is up to you. But just a couple of tips, the glue is great. Um, you can glue these things in, but it's good to have the impression. So that way you can come back and put it in there later if you yeah. wanna go straight in the clay. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, a few more questions if that's okay. Sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, Anonymous asked if we could use a pencil to create the hole. I would imagine that would probably be fine. Might just make some, you know, graphite. It, yes. you know, staining in the in there but you can i'm gonna i have a pen i have a pencil here um and i have many holes here i would say protect your working surface so if you're working directly on a table you might want to put a piece of paper underneath it or something because your pencil mark your pencil will get your get your um table underneath now you can see on the inside here it is a little bit gray i mean you may not be able to see it with the camera but it's a little bit gray from the graphite but again, we're going to paint this guy. So you're not going to be able to see the graphite. Graphite may bother you, may not, but once it's painted, you're not going to see it anymore. So that is that is definitely, if you have a pencil, if you have, I'm trying to think you got me a bobby pin, pencil, anything that's that that will that will puncture your clay safely. Very good. Excellent. That's a great question. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then uh, Leda, or Lada, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, asked if we could use colorful magic model uh, for, I, I would imagine that is for your base clay or? Oh, or, yes. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking I'm magic model. Yes. Yes, yeah. you can. You can use a different color if you want to. Um, the the downfall will be if you, if you want to paint it, it probably won't show the color, so it won't get into the grooves. But I will say, if you use a color, use a use the black paint. Um, use the black paint because it's just you'll see in a minute. It's just going to be a thin wash, um, and what it will do is you can and I'll, and I'll remind me if I forget. Um, if you just want the black to be inside the grooves, so if you do let's say a green clay for for grid, and you want to be able to see the impressions a little bit better, um, if we wash this black over it. You know, water it down, wash it over it, and then we'll use a paper towel to kind of blot up what's on the top. Then only the impression will stay black. So it will really make the impression stand out. So great question. Yes, you can use other colors. I, for the sake of using, um, you know, lighter paints, um, went with white, but uh, I used, you know, gray is one of my favorite. It is, you know, I know my son who's an artist will, will argue that gray's not, you know, is it a color? Is it not a color? But I think it is. So now I love it. So um, I would, I would do a gray and then do a little bit of black in there. So absolutely. Great, great question. Yeah. Great tips as well. And then Kim asks, um, just in case if they happen to get into it or eat it, is clay safe for animals? That, um, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I would, I'm going to go out and say, yes, it is because this is, this clay is okay for three and up. Um, I would say that, um, you know, 
Try not, try not to let your dogs get to it, but I do know dogs can be crafty um, sometimes and, uh, and sneaky. I know mine are. So um, I, I wouldn't, I would always, I would always call the, you know, the, the vet just to make sure if that does happen. Um, but I, as far as I know, this is, it's non-toxic. So it, um, I'm looking at the back just to make sure if it says something on there. Um, not necessarily specific to animals, but the non-toxic. Usually they say on there um, with kids stuff, but crayons usually say it, but I don't know if clay would actually say it on here, but that's a great question. Oh yeah, non-toxic right there. So very good. I know that the visual is not great and this shiny packaging and light, you know, just not, but it does say non-toxic. So I am pretty, I, I, I'm pretty confident in saying that if, if your dog does get into it, then you'll, then, and then they'll be okay. Um, but again, I would definitely call just to double check if that does happen. So great question. Do we have any more or do we want to move to? No, yeah, we can keep moving on for now. Awesome. Yes. We got a, a lot of enthusiastic learners here today. Oh, that's so. great. Great questions, you guys. I love that. Okay. So now we're going to paint. So really, um, um, you just um, choose whatever color that you want. And if you don't have this specific paint, that's okay. This is a thinner washable paint from Creatology. And I'm, and um, it's it, this one right here. This, the one I have, you can get it in, I believe it comes in an eight pack or a 12. I'm sorry, eight or, yeah, eight or 12, or maybe a six or a 12, but I, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I have the 12 here. And this is the bright, like the neon side. So it's got like neon blue and all these fun neon colors. And then it has a primary side. So it has the primary blue, green, yellow, red, black, and white. Um, and then, um, and you can see here, uh, this color was, well, what color was that? I feel like it was, looks like a teal color. Um, so I may have mixed, cause sometimes I like to mix and play with colors. So, um, or when it, when it brushes, it may have been that blue that came out, but it's, it's a really pretty color. Um, this was the, this was the red. It's not super bright, but I wanted, I like the kind of the fuchsia, which is kind of like, a, I know fuchsia's got a little bit of purple in it, but this kind of gives a hot pink, light red kind of, kind of feel to it. Um, and then this guy here was the neon orange. That's got that one right there. So it was, it was a good color. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna move these leaves out of the way here. And then I'm gonna pop this out because I will glue it back. As I mentioned earlier, I will glue it in because I'm really, I like that. Um, and then I, for some reason, poked another hole right here. And I'll say for some reason, because I, I think I was just showing how to do that. Since these right here aren't gonna be finished on camera since I'll need time to dry to continue on. Um, I think we're okay. Just This was my little palette over here and this is my finished. We'll go with that. So I'm gonna have fun and I'm gonna do, because pink is my favorite color. I'm gonna do a hot pink. And you can leave, these things have a great, this has a great stand already on there. So if you can see it, kind of, I know the camera's kind of close to my desk, so I apologize. It's not the best um, showing, but you can see here, it's, it has this plastic stand. You can pop these out. They are pretty tight. I just leave them in and I just take the lid off, which again, is kind of tight. So give me just a minute, get away from the camera so I can open this guy. And these aren't the first time I've opened them. I must have not known my own strength. I may have to go with the color on the outside. Give me just a minute. While we're working on that, we actually did have a couple more questions come through. Um, Leda asked, can we add designs to the clay? Yep, you can add whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, this is it, completely yours. And in the same vein, Caroline asked, could we use a dark colored paint? I know we're about to use pink here, but I would imagine you could use any color paint that makes you happy. Yes, absolutely. We're going to wash it down. So it's a little bit like on here. I'll put this, I'll just leave this guy here. Well, I think my camera froze again. Yeah, your front facing okay. one did, but your your hand cam's fine. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to leave this here just so you can kind of see. This is a... Um, I think my hand froze again. Yeah, yeah, perfect um, timing. Right <laughs> as I said that, your hand. Right. I, said, I apologize. I don't know what's going on. Um, so this right here is is a little bit of a wash. Um, this actually was a dark color, believe it or not. Uh, again, um, my camera will catch up in just a minute. There we go. This right here was a dark color, but because I um, because I diluted it with water, you want just or I'll, I should say this. I wanted a, just a wash, 
But if you want a darker color, then you can do this any way you want. And if, if you're super happy with your um, results, that's awesome. If you're not, you know, you should have, you know, a lot of clay. This project is really, really easy. And the nice thing is you can make a lot of different ones and, and see what you will see what you end up liking the best. Um, what I like is, you know, different what somebody else likes. So, you know, jump in and, and with both feet and have fun with this. It's, it's a lot of fun. Also, I did not mention yet, but I will mention now. Um, hashtag us. Show us what you're doing. We love to see uh, your finished projects. And if uh, you can hashtag it, at hashtag make it with Michael's. Um, and hashtag Michael's classes. Both are great, great hashtags to use. Yes, absolutely. Um, I actually put that in the chat for everybody oh. to see as well. So if you need to, uh, if you want to copy and paste it or whatever, it is there for you too. Fantastic. Um, Adeline did ask as well, are we technically supposed to let it dry before painting it? No, you there can, you, you can, um, but you don't have to because they will dry together. Um, the nice thing is we'll leave these out and they can dry. You know, it, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty easy. This project's pretty easy. It's pretty uh, forgiving. So you can do some, some different, different thing. You can, you can, but it's not imperative. Perfect. So, Thank you so yeah. much. Sure. Um, I'm going to pull my pa uh, paper towels close to me just because I'm going to be using water and paint and I have a little bit of OCD going on. So, um, so I'm going to dip my paintbrush. You can't really see it right now, but I'm just dipping it in water right now. And then oh, that was on my finger. So that did not work out. Okay. And then I'm just going to brush my, my piece here with water. I'm gonna. I'm actually just using the paint from directly from the um, lid because that's just kind of what I do there. And I'm just gonna brush it over. You can see it's pretty opaque, but you can see how you, the, the impressions are really starting to stand out because the paint's going down in the um, in the grooves of the impression, which is great. This is um, now you can uh, let this dry and then put another coat over it if you want to. This paint is because it's a washable paint it is pretty thin. So it may take, if you want a darker, you know, darker finish, you may want to just let the paint dry. And then, cause it kind of gives it a little bit of a coat. Then we'll do it. You know, you can do another one over it. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to get the black here and I'm going to do a little bit on this one to show you if you were to do a color, see if I open this jar. Oh, that one was easier. It was nice. Okay. And then I am going to, and again, the paintbrush does not matter. You can use any paintbrush. If you have, if you don't have a paintbrush and you have a cotton swab, that works. Um, and then I'm just going to do a little bit of the black over it. See how that really stands out. This will do it on like a color. If you have a, if your clay is a, a like a blue or a red, it will um, make your impression stand out a little bit better. And then immediately I'm going to, oops, let me get it wet a little bit. I'm going to wipe now because I have a white surface, mine might stain a little bit more so than if you have a color. Um, but I'm just wiping off the top. And the black, you know, is still, you can still see the impression. It's, it's I mean, it's not as prominent as I would like from the, you know, because I would like a little bit more black into the grooves. When you wipe it off, it's going to, some of it's going to come up. So you just kind of want to play with it to get, to get the grooves to, um, and that's kind of chunky there. And I think it's because I was using the lid and I did not shake this before. So, um, and then, you know, maybe just trying to blot it, blot it might work too pretty well. So it's pulling it up, but yeah, so it's keeping that one just took all of it off, but you might want to let it dry for a few minutes. I'm sorry, this clay is, could be me trying to go too fast too. Okay, so we'll let that set for a minute and then we'll come back to it. You don't want it to completely dry because you want to be able to wipe it off. You don't want it to stain. Um, but doing a, you know, doing a thin layer, you know, and then maybe pushing some white over it, you know, kind of thin it out, but keep it, keep it on there will help. So there's all kinds of, you know, just play with it. There's all kinds of ways to, to make this the best project that you want to make out of it. So. Now we're getting kind of closer to time. I know we have about 20 minutes, so I'm going to add a little bit more paint on here because I didn't really, you don't want to put too much up front. You kind of want to do them in kind of thin layers just because this paint is, like I said, kind of thin. It will dry. It will take a while to dry the thicker you put it on there. 
Yeah. A um, couple of questions uh, regarding the paint, actually, if that's all right. Um, um, uh, Manhita asked, do we have to put water while painting or can we directly put the paint to the clay? You don't have to. I like the water, a little bit of a, a thinner paint, a watercolor look. So you can use, you can use paint, you know, direct paint. You can use more of a um, acrylic if you want something that's, you know, a little bit thicker, not that this is washable, um, in, in, which makes it, you know, a little bit thinner. So um, you can use a paint that's not washable that might be a little bit thicker. Um, and, and yes, you, can, you, don't have to, you do not have to water it down. That was just my preference. Awesome. And you actually answered the next question in that one where they asked, can we use acrylic paint to paint this? Yes, which absolutely. you said you could. So yes, you perfect. Yes, you can. So I'm going to let those guys dry. And I'm actually going to peel this paper away here. And I'm going to clean our slate because I'm going to show you about the, while those dry, what my paper is. Here, I'm going to pull it out of the camera. My, my space between my paper and my camera is pretty thin. So Let's see if I can get these guys off here. Okay, so I'm just going to shift these over and then we are going to come back with, we have, I'm just going to put some of these finished projects over here because the um, sliding knot closure may take a couple of times for me to show you um, just because at first it's like, wait, what did you do? Um, it's not, it's not very difficult, but it takes, sometimes it takes a minute to catch to catch what I'm doing. So I will go slow and then I will go multiple times. So, um, so I have a couple of, I have a couple of them of the uh, cording already cut. I, I fast forwarded on you. So you wanna let your, you wanna let your clay dry. It looks like we lost audio here for a second. So I'll play a little catch up. We're not hearing. There we go. Like... Goodness, I'm so sorry. I don't know what it must be. My connection must be kind of spotty right now. Um, but uh, what I was saying was uh, let your clay dry, your clay and your paint. Least... Okay, I'm back. All right, geez. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm like, it gets really quiet. And I'm like, okay, must be. For... So I'll look up and I'll see you frozen. Or I'm frozen. I apologize. Um, let your clay dry. If you want to add more paint once it's dry, you absolutely can do that. If you think it turns out a little bit lighter and you want it a little darker, you can add more add more paint once it's dry. Um, and once it's completely dry, we can turn it into a jewelry piece. Um, if you want a bracelet, remember to do two holes. If you want to do a charm, I would make it a little bit smaller than this just because the bigger the charm, the easier it is to catch on things. So I would do it smaller in just one hole, but this I did do two for a bracelet. So this guy here is one hole. We're gonna do this one as a pendant. So I cut a long piece of cording and uh, did not measure it, but I will now 12, 24. Looks like it's about 36 inches. You do not need 36 inches. This is, may just be a piece that I had um, as I was looking through these little pieces that I had already cut, I would say probably, let's see what this is here. It's 12, 24, maybe about 30, 28 to 30 inches is maybe what you really need. Um, trying to eliminate you know, waste, but you may end up cutting some off at the end. Um, so I'm going to fold it in half. So I took my long, I know the camera, I apologize for this part, the camera's only so big. Um, so I'm going to, I'm folding it in half. So if you see here, Trying to get to the middle here. There we go. I fold it in half and I'm going to just run my hands down here so you can see here's the loop of the fold. So I'm going to pinch this fold here and I'm going to push it through the hole. If you're having trouble getting it through, and I'm not, but I'm going to show you a couple tricks. You can push your little, use your little toothpick, pull it through. You can also wrap a little piece of household tape around there to make it a little needle. Um, but again, I'm working on it with a dry piece right now. So you want to make sure this is dry. You want to let this make sure you're working with a dry piece or your clay will, you know, tear or something like right here and you don't want it to tear. So, um, so I have my, I have my loop through the hole and, uh, and then I'm going to take my ends, my, my two ends that I had on the other side, 
thread them through this loop. And I grab the side and then I'm going to pull. I will show this again. And then I'm pulling it so it's a little bit tighter up against my pendant. And that's called, oops, I'm sorry, I, I got down. The, that's called a lark's head knot. So we, I will, let me take it apart and show you again. Okay, so I folded my piece in half. I have my ends on down on this side. Right now it's on my right side. That's not really imperative, but just so you can kind of get a visual of what I have going on. Then on my left hand, I have um, the fold. Switching hands because I am right-handed. I'm pinching that loop, the, the bend, the bend, oh, sorry. I'm pinching the fold where, where it's at the halfway point. And I'm gonna push that fold through the hole of my pendant here. And again, if you're having a little bit of trouble, mine just happened to wanna stop right there. Just gonna shove it through with my toothpick, just carefully. And again, I'm working with a dry piece. And then I'm taking my ends here and I'm gonna thread the ends through the fold. And you see it's through the fold. Then I'm gonna pull the ends so that this, the fold rests snugly at the top of my pendant here. Is that, do we have any questions about that so far? No okay. questions related to the knot. We did have a, a few questions in general though. Um, we had anonymous ask if we had to put any type of sealer over the paint to keep it from coming off. Let's see, can you still hear me? I can see your, I can see you moving, but I've lost you. Okay, I can I can hear you now. Can you hear okay. me? Yes, I can hear you now. I'm sorry. What was the you said you had a question? Or yes. There was a question? Yes, Great. absolutely. So um, anonymous asked if they uh, if there was a need to put any type of sealer over the paint to keep it from coming off. Um, you don't have to, but you can. Um, I actually did on one of mine, but not on both. And the only reason I did that was just to give it a little bit of a stronger reinforcement. And I used a Mod Podge. I just did a clear Mod Podge piece over. Actually, I just did it over the back. Um, so really any glue that dries clear will work really well, but I would say Mod Podge is, is just a great option. It's not necessary, it is, it's not an absolute have to, but it, it won't hurt it. I'll just give you a little bit of extra security also. Great question. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it looked like actually, because when you flip that one around, it actually relates to Ash's question here, it was, which was, do we paint the back? And it looks like no, or you can. It's up you to can. You. Mm -hmm. I didn't, um, and not for any reason. Um, you absolutely can. You can even do impression. Once it, well, I guess you had you'd have to do it beforehand. I was going to say you could do an impression on the back. Problem with doing an impression on the back is you may you might compromise the the impression on the front side. So, um, but yeah, you can absolutely paint paint the back if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't have to. Yeah. Up to you. Up to you. Yeah. And then uh, Joe asked, "Does it have to be a necklace? No. Any other ideas?" Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, this is a bracelet. I just didn't, you know, I because I submitted this for photography at work, I didn't have a you know wrist to put it on right away. So I didn't know the size, but yeah, you can just tie it, you know, just tie it on. Um, you can do, uh, you can apply the sliding knot that I'm, teach, that I'm about to teach you to a bracelet. You just want to make your ends a little bit longer. Um, and let me think, you can make them, you can be a small charm and add it to a bracelet you already have. I would just make it a little bit smaller, um, just so, because the bigger the charm on your wrist, that tends to catch things, you know, when you're in your everyday life. Um, and you can make, you know, this can be a backpack tag. You can do a backpack pull, um, which is also fun, kind of a little identifier, let people know that it's your backpack. Um, so there's all kinds of things. I mean, this can be anything you want. It can be, you know, a paperweight. It's not very heavy, but it can be. Um, and you can, you know, you can do, you can, you can glue it to the front of a notebook to make an emblem. Just, you know, you won't need a hole unless you're going to, um, attach it with twine or, uh, um, cording. So yeah, you can do anything with it. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Okay. Do we have any more right now? Are we good? 
we are good for right now. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to move all these out here so we don't have the distraction. This is the going to be the sliding knot. This one's a little bit, a little bit more advanced, but I think it's a great, a great option. Just so you can see here, this is what I'm talking about: a sliding knot. So you know, you, the necklace needs to be big enough to go around your head, but you may not want it that long. So the nice thing about this is, is this can go around the head, but then I can slide it on the back to make it any length that I want. So. You know, my daughter likes the choker. She likes it really up close to her neck where I want something that's a little bit lower, um, you know, off of my neck. I don't want it right up there, but, you know, it's just preference, how you want it. So um, before I show the sliding knot, I should mention that add beads if you want beads and you can add them at one time. You can add them to each side. Like this one here has them on both sides. Um, you can, they don't have to be these natural wood beads. They can be pony beads. They can be a combination. And, and it's just threading them on, you know, it's not, um, nothing too, too difficult. Um, sometimes these guys have, um, you know, that the insides not, may not be finished out completely. And if that's the case, just run your toothpick through the, through the bead. Um, for example, like in the jewelry world, they're strong. So, you know, they're, they're finished on the inside, but sometimes these are, have a little bit of, um, let's see if I can find one. I know I saw one earlier. This one isn't too bad, but you know, this looks like here, it might have to be something that hinders me being able to thread it. So I'm just gonna, what they call reaming. I'm gonna ream the bead with a toothpick. So it opens it up, makes it easy, makes it easier. Um, and then for, just for fun's sake, I'm gonna add some other colors. These are, I'm just grabbing some out of my, my container here, so. And this is just some pearlized beads. And if I was a little bit more prepared, I could have had my name pulled out. Oh, I have my alphabets separated by letter. So if I want to do my name, where my ends, there they are. I can add like to one side, I might want to put my name. So I'm going to, let's see, make sure I put this on right. So it doesn't end up with one A upside down because that's that's my thing. I typically do something like that. Okay, put this back on here. Okay, so let me back get back on camera. And what I like to do with the name it, it name is I like to lay it out the way it's supposed to be, or the way I want it to be on my on my necklace, and then I thread it that way. That way I know. All my letters are the right direction and read, you know, read, read, legible or readable. And then, so I have that on that one side. Oops, sorry, this, these guys are crossing on me. Um, I'm just gonna add, a, on this side, I'm just gonna add just some beads. And this cotton tends to fray a little bit. If that happens, you can you know get it wet, or you can um, you know just nip the tip off, or add as I mentioned earlier, add a little piece of tape and make it like a like a little plastic you know plastic needle idea, and then I'm just going to add a couple more colors onto, or maybe just some natural thrown in here. You can also do that other little trick with a toothpick and just shove it. Try to get that guy to go through. Still doing okay? Yep, we're doing great. This guy just wants to be a little bit stubborn. Here, let me, I'm gonna dip this in in the water a little bit. Make that easier to see if I can get him to cooperate. See, even the, even the professional um, crafters sometimes run into some challenges with their, oops, I just used a adult scissor. I apologize for that just habit. Okay. So I'm just, you know, for me, I just wanted these to be, be balanced on size a little bit. Not perfect, but close enough. Close enough for today. Check those a little bit. Okay, so once I get those, 
on here. Now this is where we do the sliding knot. So I'm going to, I'm just gonna move this stuff out of, out of here. I'm just working with the ends here. Okay, so you have your ends. What you wanna do is you want to overlap them. Okay, so they are crisscross over, overlapped. So the, um, so once they do that, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up at the intersection here and I always do it the same way. So I know my knots are going, going the right way. So you'll see me flip this, pro flip it in just a minute. So, um, so what I do is I have, I have the, the, the side of the cording that's on the right side of the necklace pointing out toward the left. So I'm just going to do a knot around. Might want to center it a little bit more, a little off screen Thank there. You. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this is a little bit difficult to, um, um, I'm, I'm hoping it's not too difficult to see on the, on camera. Um, but, and all I did was just an over, regular everyday overhand knot capturing the left. You know, I did the overhand knot over the left, the string on the left side. Okay, so I'm gonna flip, turn this around and I'll show you how I did that again. So what I did was I turn around. So this guy's out here. Remember I've just mentioned, I always do it the same way. I flip it around. So this, I'm working with the same string pointing the same direction. So then my knots are um, even. Now, is it the worst thing that they aren't even? Absolutely not. Um, it's just the way I like them. This is how I do it. Um, so what I did was, is I'm just grabbing, grabbing a hold of both I have a sliding knot. Now, what I don't want is these guys here to ever, you know, slide through, and they won't because these are knots. But just for just for grins, I usually like to do just a just a finish, like a little. Um, I didn't leave a lot of room on that side, but I'll do it on this side. I like to do a little, um, just a knot on the end, just a finish a finished look. I don't leave a lot of in a lot of room on this end, but um, just gives a little bit of a finished end. And then I'll cut that, trim that end. And this is being recorded, so if you um, want to come back once your pendant is dry, and and watch this end part on how to do the sliding knot, you do not have to do a sliding knot. It can be a regular, um, just a just a simple knot. Um, this guy is just too, I just left this one too short. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna loosen it a little bit so I can give myself a little bit more slack to work with. Now you can do that knot first too, if you want to. So I just, all I did was loosen that up to give me a little bit more slack here. Didn't really give me a lot more, but a little bit. Hopefully that's all I will need. And this was that side that was giving me trouble going into that bead too. So this was my stubborn end. And it's fraying a little bit. So I'm sorry, it's not gonna be as pretty as I'd like it to be on this end, but I will trim those, the, the frayed ends off. So you will not be, there we go. And there is my sliding knot. So for a bracelet, I like to keep this one a little bit more simple. Um, I have longer ends to see, oh, we're at time now. So um, it's basically just real quick. I'll just show you here. I just did, I just threaded, instead of doing the lark said knot, I just threaded um, this through the hole. And it's, this one's gonna give me a little bit of trouble. So, cause I'm trying to go super fast. And once I got this through the hole, I brought these up to this to the um, e to even. I added beads. Oh, well, I just cracked mine because I'm going too fast. Um, so I just thread it through, added a bead, tied a knot, and then you can either do a sliding knot on the end, the exact same way we did on the necklace, or you can simply tie, just tie it on. Problem with the only thing about tying it on is when it's on, it's on, and it might have to be cut off. So that's just something to think about. Um, you can always restring it if you want to to wear it again, but sliding knot is nice because you can take it on and off when you want to shower and um, or just not wear it that day. So anyway, 
sorry we ran out of time at the end. I was trying to trying to stay on on task, but sometimes that clock gets ahead of me. So I appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. guys. Don't forget to hashtag us at hashtag Michael's classes and hashtag make it with Michael's and show us what you made. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Thank you.